going through, okay? We are um, having a nightmare with Wi-Fi today. Can nightmare. you see us? Can you hear us? Hello, everybody. Hello. If you're here for the first time ever on our YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button and give us a wave so we can say hello to you because we have a brilliant community on here. But um, I know there's still a lot of people finding out about us from Instagram. So if mm. you're new, give us a wave so we can welcome you and give you a shout out. Um, why right. Not? Well, obviously, wow. you talked about it a lot on Loose Women today. I talked about it in Coffee Moaning this morning. Um, I was saying much earlier that, you know, one has to reserve judgment really fully until you've seen the whole interview. And now we've seen not the whole interview because we keep hearing on CBS, they're releasing lots of other clips and lots of other bits and bobs and snippets. I also hear that uh, Megan's father is appearing on GMB tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. My God, that's going to be a uh, side effect. Now, the first thing I'm going to say about all of this is just purely on an objective perspective, being interviewed by someone who is a work colleague, as she said in the middle there, she's working with Harry on a mental health film for Apple TV, and someone who's a friend, immediately kind of negates the idea that this is going to be a really piercing, objective mm. and honest I interview. I think the, it's not to say that it's not an honest chat, but the, the, you know, the impetus isn't going to be quite there for Oprah to be as sort of forensic as perhaps she could have been mm. or should have been. Mm. Uh, and, and so consequently, I mean, at first I was finding, I found, I, I was quite relieved. I thought Oprah was pushing quite toughly. She was pushing quite hard. Mm. At some points, it was almost like she didn't believe them. There was yeah, a she looked bit of a sort of, Yeah, oh, okay, so you're saying, wow. Yeah. You know, in that very um, yeah. Oprah way. I couldn't work out um, whether she was performing the role of the objective interviewer. Yeah, it was, it was really, really odd. odd. It was like well, maybe she was overperforming the role of the. I'm anyway. a huge Oprah well, I'm fan. I'm a huge Oprah I fan. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I have to say, I found it absolutely. Just let's just just stop for a minute. There is nothing like watching. This was my worry when I heard someone said earlier that they might be sub-editing it or cutting it down. There's nothing like watching in close-up the faces of people talking and answering mm. these questions. Mm. I mean, obviously. There was some outer vision judicious editing going on there. I don't know if you noticed that, for example, at the most interesting point that Harry said his father and his brother were trapped, we were on a cutaway of Meghan. That was very bizarre. There were some very odd moments where some of the biggest lines, if you look at this piece, go back to it, some of the biggest lines were delivered without them actually in vision, which makes me wonder whether they were so moments... Why, what do you think that... Well, I don't know whether they could have been moments where they perhaps felt in the interviewing process. There will have been moments in, the, in an interview of that length, there will be moments where they, they factor in timeouts and they will have had conversations running mm. and they may have still had the cameras rolling and then they might have talked afterwards, oh, well, can we, can we you said this, we, are you happy to say that? And they might mm. have used it. I mean, I, you know... It did feel, it did feel very... I mean, it, well, it couldn't have felt more staged. I mean, as soon as you know you're in a chicken coop... Um, I found the chicken coop a step I mean, the too thing far. is, there was a happy ending, which is good. <clears throat> the, both their mental health seems yes. very good. They seem very strong. Yeah. The, hu the huge bombshells, of course, I said today on Lisa, I wasn't surprised that they'd felt that mm. there were comments made that, you know, um, you know racist comments. I, I wasn't surprised by that, mm. that they been felt they were treated like that. I was surprised that they said it. Yeah. Um, I think that, the most shocking thing that I heard tonight was that she, Megan, was suicidal. Mm. I mean, that was devastating for her and for him. Can you even imagine? Oh, yeah. my God. History repeating yeah. itself in a kind of way. So, I mean, there was so many, so many bombshells. Um, but the gaping hole in it for me was that there was no discussion about Megan's family. I think we've got a really well, good sense of what life was like and the impact of the institution and certain members of the royal family on both mm. their mental health. Yeah. But I don't think you can... When, let, let's actually take ourselves back to that time where her quite poisonous sister, it felt like it was almost on a daily basis. She was saying under, she the was most under assault. dreadful things. She was under assault and her by her own father, family selling stories on her. Mm. You cannot even begin to imagine what that must have been. Yeah, so you're coming... had a hu will have had a huge impact on her mental health. A pregnant woman, mm. I mean, and yet... And so I think Oprah let us down by not getting... You mm. Every family has their arguments. 
and there is always two sides. Yeah. If you, if I sit you down and you talk about your family, you're going to be in pain, you're mm. going to be in anguish. I'm going to sit there on the other side of the family and they're going to have their pain and anguish. It's the same at every yeah. family across the globe. And I just think it was very one-sided. I, yeah, I, and, and just chiming in on that. I mean, I think the first thing to say is that the biggest news story, which really we discuss, we've all discussed much earlier in the day, it's an absolute given that the racism felt from within the uh, jaundiced opinions of the of the royal family is utterly reprehensible. But with some, I mean, the thing is, because they have kind of told the story, but not fully told the story, what's happened well, is that, was that say. it's now it's now is the entire royal well, family Well, I was going to say, it was interesting. I feel sorry, because they won't all be racist. Well, it was interesting, though, because there's been this public spat going on between Piers and, is it Stephen Beresford or Alex mm. Beresford on, uh, on GMB? Um, and... The one area that they both agreed on, Beresford feels Morgan's obviously been too harsh on, on, mm. on Meghan in public, um, but one area where they both agreed on was in saying that someone in the family said this, they should have named them. Uh, yeah. And they both... I, and I it's feel an that. Interesting point. I, I and really I, feel, I feel that. that because I, I do wonder whether it does far more damage because then they've mm. had to come out with a subsequent statement earlier today via Oprah, haven't they? Saying, Saying well, it's they, not Philip. It wasn't Philip. Not it wasn't, the... So we're now going to move through the rest of the family. Well, it wasn't Charles and it wasn't... No, you but, know. I think, but I think also because I think obviously what Meghan wants by this is some sort of change, a conversation about institutionalised racism. Mm. But I think when you tell a, just a vague story... People focus on the vagueness mm. rather than the actual issue. And mm. that's what I think. It was a kind of wasted opportunity. Mm. Um, Alicia McFall says, I'll say it again. You all preach be kind of mental health, but prepare to sit in these comments and slate this family. Which one? Which family are we slating? Going to keep sending this to see if it gets through to anyone. Alicia, I'm not quite clear. Just, just make it a bit clearer for us, honey, yeah. so we know what you're not sure not what you're Not quite clear about. which family was, who's slating and, and, and why yeah. and, and what have you. I think, here's the thing. When people use this phrase, and it's a phrase that I think has gained real traction and it doesn't really mean anything. My truth. Mm. Now, the problem with this my truth thing is, of course we all have our own experiences. I think a better phrase would be in my experience mm. because there is no such thing as truth. Mm. You, you can only have you can only it can only be true to you but what's true to you isn't necessarily true to mm. someone else mm. um i thought like william and harry which i think it's ever so sad that they've that they've they they've had a breakdown in their relationship each one of their truths is their truth mm. but it doesn't cancel out necessarily no. the other person's no no truth. no absolutely um, little miss fab 96 says cbs this morning released clips where megan spoke about her father and half sister Available on CBS this morning. All oh. oh, right, okay. No, well, we but you see, that. I think that's a mistake. I don't think you can take that out of this interview. Mm. It's actually, that's actually, I think, very unfair on Meghan and Harry's full story. I think that's unfair mm. on Meghan's family, the royal family. It's a massive part of the story. Mm. You can't have, we had nearly two hours. Mm. You can't have two hours and miss that bit out. There was certainly... Well, they could have done a little less in the chicken coop and a little bit more <laughs> on, on maybe Megan. Because I'm interested... I'll tell you where it really came together for me, where I really felt... Not that I didn't, it's not that I didn't trust them, but, you know, it's all right to say Megan is a great actress and not say that nothing she's saying is true. You know, she, she is an, she's an actress mm. and they're both... She's had a terrible experience. Yeah, she's had a mental terrible experience. health has yeah, been impacted absolutely. by that. And I think anyone who's questioning, and I think it's interesting that the charity Mind have had to jump mm. on this, you know, to question, she was clearly at the darkest place. And when they were both talking, and actually, to be honest with you, it was really refreshing to hear Harry. Uh, when Harry was talking about this, I really felt a couple going through, you know, we can all sit there mm. going, well, they're in a beautiful palace and they've got mm. loads of money and what was the details of the security protocol and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, there's a man looking out for his wife and there's a man who I thought he talked really articulately about how he didn't have an awareness of unconscious bias uh, and mm. how he developed that. That he's learned. And he's that learned, he's learned that. which is good. And I thought that was really refreshing. Do you know what I found very difficult? I was just trying to picture, you know, they're in this dreadful situation where she is feeling like su suicidal. Yeah. And she speaks to her husband about this. But the next day, she has to approach HR mm. to get help. And is that just Harry's upbringing, that he wasn't able to access those kind of feelings or, mm. or get that sort of help? That seemed to me a terribly sad, sad part of the story, that they weren't able, 
themselves to access any help for somebody in such a dire mental state. I felt really, I felt really sad about that. I felt that really was, sad about that, and yeah. I, I and, and it's it's a detail that I think a lot of people have wanted to poo poo. And actually, when Harry then again backed up, because it, here's the problem for Meghan, and it is a real problem for Meghan, and I've been very outspoken about the fact that mm. I think she's got to the point now where she's almost a poison chalice, where whatever she says is met with circumspection, mm. suspicion, the derision. The avocado story was quite unbelievable, wasn't it? That comparison of when Kate ate an avocado. Oh, and my God. When Meghan well, I've been saying all along that there was a colonial prejudicial nastiness to the to the low-lying sort of coverage of her from the get-go and i i will not be budged on that i believe that and so you know but when when it got to the point where harry was talking about the fact that you know he didn't feel he could talk to other members mm. of the household mm. the context he'd given us elsewhere about his father and his brother essentially feeling trapped and them all saying this thing of this is essentially what we have to do i think we can't underestimate the extent to which even the family though they went to great lengths to, to distinguish between the business and the and family members, even the family members, each individually have their own house and team behind them. Mm. They're all operating as individual little businesses within the bigger business. Mm. And so I think there probably is an atmosphere where of not one-upmanship, but kind of, come on, stiff up a lipness. Well, and also, it, um, you know, ambition and, mm. and, and, you know, jostling for position. Yeah. I think that that's all perfectly feasible because it is a business. Darlene White Wright, you make a really interesting point. When conversations are being had re skin colour and a woman on the brink of suicide, you both have to look at that alone. This country is so entrenched in supporting the royal family, it's a joke. And I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. I think what's happened here is that the press, the interesting thing about the press is they, don't, they haven't always supported the royal family. They're always sniffing around the royal family for vulnerability and weakness. And I thought there was a really telling moment in this interview about the symbiotic relationship between the press and the royal family. And I think you're absolutely right. I think as a country, we pick and choose our battles. We pick and choose when the press pick and choose when they're going to be loyal to the, to the royal family. And it strikes me as why were they being particularly loyal just on this occasion? And again, that's what it makes me feel. There's always been a racial undertone to all of the coverage and all of the biased coverage. I mean, you know, even if, even if she's the most brilliantly performing, tyrannical, temper tantrum -y kind of woman, whatever, does that necessarily mean that, you know, what, what she's gone through is, is right or the way in which they were cut adrift was right? I don't know. I mean, you know, I mean, I think it got a little, it got a little bit baggy around the point of security personnel, whether he'd been left money, whether he'd been cut off financially. Mm. Because I do remember there being a, a moment where it felt like they wanted to take advantage of the HRH, didn't they? I mean, mm. there was all that talk. But again, how much of that is what we're being fed through the press? Mm. It's very hard to know a Actually, lot about this stuff. do we stuff. think that the royal family will answer back? Yeah. I really don't know. If you'd asked me that yesterday, I would have said absolutely no way. But the thing is here, there are very clear accusations which really I mean it was interesting there was no right of reply from, well, they from didn't, Oprah. Do they not have the same laws? They didn't there, name though? anyone, did they? Mm, I suppose I'm so. Just, we, and it's interesting that they didn't at the end of it say yeah. we went to the we went to the royal family for the right of reply. Yeah, because usually they would say they said no comment. Mm. But now after this, I don't know. I don't know. I think I think they might. What do you think? What, what the royal family's response? Might answer it. Right. I don't think they'll go into nitty gritties. Well, uh, but, I, I disagree. I think we could be in for a huge surprise here. I think um, there's one of two options. Either <laughs> the royal family is going to literally take off its gloves and it's going to become bare knuckle fighting. Mm -hmm. Prince Charles might weigh in. But I think at the moment, what I'm reading online is that there is a massive PR move. The, the backlash against Prince Charles is enormous and he's essentially our, our future king. So at the moment, the palace PR team are trying, working overtime to manage and repair his, his PR. I think it all sits with William, and I think everyone needs to watch what happens there. I'm just I wondering wonder how, many, reach out how many dads there have been through history when their son has wanted to break away from the business, because that's what he's yeah, done, yeah, yeah. Has, and they've just gone, I'm not, I'm not in, I'm not talking to. Mm. If we actually localise it to a family problem, as my dad would say, you know, what is the family problem here? Yeah. 
it, it's, it feels very brutal. Mm. But I don't think there's ever been when a son has been expected to carry through a family business and they've gone off and made their own way that there hasn't been trouble mm. at mill with the family. And I just worry that talking about it, Harry talking about it in this way, will he have an impossible rift mm. to men because he has broken all... Pro I don't know what Harry wants to get out of doing this, of mm. saying this about his dad, of saying this about William. Does he think that... Is he hoping that this will bring them back together? Because I just got a feeling like it's going to drive them further apart. I mean, they're going to be really cross with this. Mm, mm. Really cross. Yeah, I mean, I don't... I, <laughs> is it, is it, is it going to heal a rift? I mean, I was suggesting earlier this morning that perhaps is this... You know, if you feel like you've been so maligned, so misrepresented, you've seen so... And there were many examples there of press headlines. I thought it were quite good to float them in. Of how, you know, when people often say, oh, no, you haven't seen the press, it was often people go, no, it wasn't, it was equal. It was equal press coverage. And it was, I thought it was quite stark seeing the headlines there. It was not equivalent coverage. Um... And I think that, you know, if you feel that you've been isolated, you've been misrepresented, it happens in all families. Mm. If I think of the occasions it's like where that, it's happened... Massive. Yeah, but when I think of the occasions where I feel like I've been not only misunderstood, but misrepresented, it's the most infuriating thing. And if, mm. you, if I was given, bizarrely, the opportunity to go on television and actually just go, OK, this is the one time we're going to talk about it. If this is the one time they're going to talk about it and they're going to say, this is actually the situation, this, this, this and this, this was the circumstances... In many regards, what other choice have they got? What other choice have they got? I found it interesting that because we all were led to believe that 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 when they decided to 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 leave the family and the country, that really the 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 family had only discovered this on a, with a tweet, with an Instagram post, and yet that seemed very important to them that they said these discussions had been going on for mm. a year, year and a half which we'd had no idea of that. Mm. So, you know, again, it is two people's truth. And if their truth is actually what happened, you can kind of understand why they feel like they want to be vindicated, that they want all their stuff out. But what the sense that I got from this was that this is not going to heal anything in the royal family. No. For me, it felt like a final closing of the door mm. to the family and and to this country, actually. Yeah. I think they've put it felt like they've put all their eggs in the basket in America in the American basket. Because if you think about it, the Brits really don't like these big showy two hour interviews. You know, it's much more an American thing. The whole yeah, thing was incredibly them. American. That was incredibly, especially the chicken. So coop. American. Everything, you've really hung up with the chicken. With the chicken coop and the little mermaid <laughs> story, I have to confess, I found that a little bit achingly. But can I just say on the little mermaid story, I was aching, I was, I was groaning, but I was groaning in the way I would groan with any sort of lovey actor paralleling their life with a, with a Disney animation. Mm. That's how I felt about it. Mm. And, you know, I know that that was, you know, happening. And again, going back to this thing of my truth, one, my, my truth is true to me and your truth is true to you, but my truth is no more truer or less truer mm. than her truth. And mm. so I thought this interview was at its strongest when I was hearing Harry away from Meghan sort of talking about his stuff and Meghan uh, talking about stuff that Harry then commented on and was sort of talking about, because I didn't feel that there I was... I thought he felt a bit awkward about Well, I thought he felt awkward, but I, did, I, I felt the lack of a strategy. And it's difficult for any actress, when they're being interviewed, to not look like they're potentially acting in That's some way. That's the trouble. I mean, I mean being, an actress, being an actress, I've been in relationships before, yeah. and I might be crying because I'm having... Yeah. And they're like, are you acting? It's like, just because you're an actress doesn't mean everything you're doing is acting. But unfortunately, you know, you're the most least likely to be chosen mm. as a witness or anything because yeah. if your profession comes up, the jury won't believe you simply because you're an actor. So I do, I do think a lot of Meghan's problems with her own PR revolve actually, sadly, around her, her career because there's a perception, I think, there's a perception that if she's an actress, then she's got to be the... You know. This is what I think. You know, a lot of people say it's... First of all, I don't think... I, I do think she will have Googled Harry. I mean, it's just... No, <laughs> that, that, I... I well, no, I, hang on, hang on It's more the ancillary... I didn't realise she was friends, friends with, with Eugenie. Eugenie. There's ancillary stuff that I think, mm, I'm not quite sure. Yeah. I think the big stuff, I think the mental health stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I felt that that was real. 
but I just think there's stuff around the edges yeah. that just felt a bit, you know. Um, I think she was a bit of a victim of being an actress. Yeah, I agree. In that, and American. She, when she was warned about how difficult life would be in the palace, she was thinking about it in terms of celebrity. Showbiz. And when you are an actor and when you're in a big show, you are so well looked after when you're in a big mm. show. Mm. You know, your publicists will protect you and sort out any problems. And I would imagine that quite, quite reasonably, she would have thought, in the royal family, it's going to be that and some. Mm. But actually, the royal family, I mean, we've seen it. I mean, Harry himself on the junk, uh, the cordon thing said, you know, a lot in the crown is true. Mm. You know, and actually a lot of it is very rough and ready. You're on your own. You know, don't make a fuss. They're, they're proper the old-fashioned aristocrats. I was fan. That was a little detail that I liked, that he watches watched a few of the crown. I feel like I could have a beer with Harry, and I don't oh, drink. This is interesting. Red-headed bimbo thinks that the Queen will have known what was in the interview because Harry loves and respects her too much. He's, didn't his eyes just light yeah, up yeah, every time up. he spoke about What does he call her, her colonel-in-chief or something? Yeah, you yeah. know what? I felt real sadness for him because he is at the moment on the pink cloud mm. of a new life, a life that I think is right for him and better for him. Mm. It's okay to want to leave the family business. I think everyone has the right to their own life. Mm. But I think this interview will... I can't imagine how his relationships with his family will heal after this. And I think after the pink cloud of the big exit and a new life and the big villa in America, eventually everybody seeks their family. You just mm. do. You just do. And I just think... He could end up in a place where he... And listen, how many people do we know that move out to America? And America is a great place. I mean, we're real American fars. We love it. But you start missing... You know, he was in the army and his happiest time in his life was when he was in the army and he was just Harry. Mm. He's always pushed against being a prince. Mm. And I just think... I just think he will miss the Britishness of his British self. Nikki Field says, Meghan's sister Samantha is speaking out, saying, quote, depression is not an excuse for treating people like dish rags, unquote. Um, John Dobbins... She really is always there, isn't she, with a little poisoned dart. John Dobbins, you say, so would it be different if it had been of a, a, been a black woman he married from UK? I think you're probably picking up on the fact that I said, I think it's to do with her being an actress and an American. No, I, I principally think it's to do with her being black. I, I, I think secondarily to that, she's I don't, got the yeah, added aggravation of being American and an actress. And I think those... Three things have just made it... Into, but she, I also she was think, tilted to but, not succeed from the get-go. Look, not everybody that doesn't like Meghan is a racist. No, no. But anyone who is a racist wouldn't like Meghan. <laughs> that's true. And I think that that's a really important distinction. And what we don't want is for ever, nobody ever to be able to yeah. say, oh, well, I didn't like this or I didn't like that. Mm. Um, um, and I think, I think... I think some of the things coming out of this, I think Prince Charles, it, it's... I, I you know... I've always had a bit of time for Prince Charles. I'm not saying that he's he's been particularly, you know, brilliant. But you know, I think I saw. All we know I saw about Prince room. Charles is he said, "Put it in writing," and I'm not talking to you for well, a bit. But he hasn't which to happens in yes, every in families, family when somebody it? leaves yeah. the business. I'm hoping mm. that this interview hasn't caused. Mm. a much bigger rift but I fear that it, it well you never done. know they might all know. I mean I don't know I mean it's like someone said who which member of the royal family spat their muesli across the room this morning when they heard the comment about who'd said about well when the they baby. said this morning they had someone from the times you know and the times knows all about what's happening at the palace the queen is now taking mm. her breakfast and she is being um, briefed and I thought oh my god imagine being the person going in to brief mm. the queen yeah. On, well, I mean which bits would they oh my god I mean, imagine. Lior, you're absolutely right. It doesn't matter how much melanin Archie has. The fact that the family thought it was okay to say those things is disgusting. Why aren't the press going after Andrew? And that's my frustration about the bullying okay. claims. It's not to talk about whether they're not true or not. But if, if only the same amount of energy and effort were being put into making sure Andrew spoke to the Hang FBI. on. What I would say is, though, and I absolutely despise Andrew, and I was sickened by that interview, we have had... Tons of press on Andrew. Mm. Tons. Mm. And I mean, until now, I think everything that could be said about Andrew has been said for now until he's spoken to the... I mean, he's part of an FBI mm. investigation. And believe you me, they will go through it in such detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the Mail did a, like, 12-page spread on 
Prince Andrew. Mm. Um, I think they are two different stories. I really yeah. do. I don't think necessarily... Um, I, I don't think necessarily one... Counteracts here. You can, you yeah, can use them in a I parallel mean, way. Yeah, I don't yeah. think you can use them in a parallel way because yeah. they're just such, such different stories. Yeah. He will, I hope, one day be held fully accountable if he did do anything. Yeah, Prince because Andrew. We, yeah, Prince yeah. Andrew, because, you know, as yet. Well, he just needs to talk to the FBI because he was in Pizza Express. He just Express. needs to talk to the FBI. He just needs FBI. to talk to the FBI about what pizza just he had Just go and talk Express. to the FBI, for God's sake, yeah. man. Um, tra -la, la Harry. Oh, sorry, I've just lost you. Where have you gone? Come, come back, come back, come back. Harry, William and Kate were doing their huge push with mental health and the charities. Megan joined that. I find it hard to believe she was told she wasn't allowed help. I do believe her, though. Mm. I think what happened is this. I I suspect what happened was she went to HR. Well, she said she went to yeah, HR. She did, yeah. And somebody today okay, was telling Alicia, me at work sense. that knows all this stuff about the royal family. She said, you know, you have all the principals, which is the royal family, and then you have all the staff. Yeah. And that's who HR deal with, and there'll be a budget, and there'll be all of that. So it possibly could have been that she went to HR, but she's a principal royal, and HR wouldn't deal with that yeah, sort yeah, of thing. Possibly. And I mean, when I had the question, God, why didn't she just ring, or why didn't Harry find a mental health expert in this absolute crisis i mean she was yeah. saying she couldn't be left yeah, alone yeah, yeah, yeah. and i just thought well maybe there was this fear or you mm. know this paranoia almost that anything that you do or say outside of the palace could end up being leaked and could end up mm. being talked about so i mean with everything i can see bam and bam, i can really i, I can really feel for him. i mean you you sort of said under your breath at one point oh is is, is harry almost living out the drama again of, of his mum because he's well, so the sort of well, the horror by. yeah mm. but, but he's almost inadvertently tripping into or potentially tripping into some of the same mistakes maybe with doing this interview milk honey just going knocking back to andrew for a moment who knows that given especially in the context of given what harry said about the symbiotic you scratch my back i'll scratch yours relationship with the press who knows that they didn't give the press that interview with andrew and info on him just to protect him from more serious stuff well, I mean, the thing is, I don't think we do know, do we? Yeah. All we ever hear is about, you know, the shadowy, yeah. the, 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 the institution, the firm. And I think, I think what was a bit of a problem with this interview is I sometimes couldn't know the line mm. between who's the family and who's the institution. So I think for them even, I think they might sit and look at it and go, oh, God, that might look, look like we were actually talking about the family when actually we were talking mm. about the people that run the family. There was a, there was a point when Megan said... When I think Harry had said they don't always know what's going on, or she said, or they're told something different. Yeah, Did yeah, you yeah. see Megan say yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was almost like she. The, the suggestion was that all the royal family are being manipulated by the men in the grey suits, which yeah. of course Diana spoke about as well, didn't absolutely. she? Absolutely. Uh, Dy yeah. apps. What about Kate making Megan cry? I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm presuming and assuming. Obviously, she's not going to say that if, if it's if it didn't happen. Well, I mean, I think it was interesting that yeah. she made the point that she has a note mm. from Kate saying that and I think she was also very fair in saying you know she's a good person and she oh. apologized it was obviously it was a thing about a bridesmaid dress there was obviously something went on somebody cried she sent some flowers I mean, can, sorry can I made you cry be that upsetting oh I think with brides brides can get very can upset it? can it get yeah. very sort of right. okay. but 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 imagine if six or seven months later, a story comes out and this what happened to you is told as if it's... Well, she said oh, a couple of times that was the turning point. Mm. And I don't know what you guys thought, but it felt to me that that's probably the moment that the brothers fell out. Because mm. yeah, she, she made agree. a point, she said that a couple of times it was the turning point. Yeah. And you can imagine, again, take the royal family thing out of it. Think of any family, your family, the family down the road. Two new wives, they have an argument, one's upset, something did da they have a bit of a crossword, and it all become it all goes yeah, tits yeah. up kind of thing. And you can kind of imagine that that's what, and then it gets out of hand and you're like, and, and it rolls along, mm. you know, so. Todd the Bunny says maybe they made each other cry. It sounds like they did. Hilary Daly, yes, definitely Harry has been so affected by his mother's death. William too, but is trapped, as Harry said, more or less. Mm. Uh, I thought that was a really sad yeah. moment when he said, my dad and my brother are trapped, and I was trapped, but I didn't know I was trapped. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, that, that, that was... 
That was quite interesting, because, I mean, uh, I felt Oprah was overperforming her not understanding what he was talking about there. Mm. Uh, you know, there were moments where... I like Oprah. I mean, I, I like the cut of her jib. I like, I like the way she is. I love her. I like, I've, her. I've, I've loved lovely. her ever since, you know, the colour... I just love her. I just think she's great. But um, I think you, you... I think I would have, as an executive producer, I would fully recommend it that they'd snipped out her saying, I'm working with Harry on a mental health documentary. It just... It neutered her objectivity. Maybe she had to legally say it. That she had a vested financial interest in it, so maybe. Mm. Very disappointed that Oprah... Oh, it's just gone. Sorry. Uh, let me take it down. Uh, who was that? Ambrose Hawtrey Soames. Uh, very disappointed that Oprah didn't take the opportunity to reflect on the utility of the monarchy as an institution and whether or not it should be consigned to the past as an antiquated relic. Beautiful paragraph. There. Beautifully Same, put. Beautifully written. Um, maybe too big and theoretical a concept yeah. for, for quite a... And maybe in the longer version. I mean, I wonder whether we're going to get the director's cut. Maybe there's going to be a longer cut of this. But do you not think in their answers and what they were saying, Brilliant they were quote. kind mm. of saying that, weren't they? They were saying but that I've in a very thought, digestible I, way. I, my theory on all of this, my theory on all of this is that if this could have been played out in a different way, we could see at the very edges of the royal family the old guard be removed, William and Kate will be the new manifestation, Charles may, may not actually be king, um, Harry and and then Harry and William become the public face of a certain generational sort of or, monarchy. Or the royal family go right, they wind it right back and they go back to never complain, never explain. Yeah. They absolutely tighten the ring around them. They batten down the hatches. They say absolutely nothing about this. They, get, they move it on. That's what I think. they get a new head of HR. That's what I, I, I yeah. at the moment, that's what I feel. Mm. If you're new to the channel, wow, hit the guys. subscribe button. We do so much on this channel, all yeah. kinds of things. Hit the subscribe, hit the Mental thumbs up films, if you've enjoyed this chat. You know, whenever, reviews, whenever, there are, TV reviews. whenever there are big news stories like this, we love to kind of have a natter, capture the mood, talk with you guys. Your contributions are always so good, mm. always we so interesting. We've got some more people like, I want um, to know what people do hit think. The th do hit the thumbs up icon if you're enjoying it. Kate, 2806-4212, Megan deserves wow. empathy and vindication, but it seems sad it has come to at the expense of her husband's family relationships. Is this irreparable damage, you're asking? Who thinks, who thinks? I mean, I think they have, I think they, are, they were very, very unhappy. What I see now is two people very much in love and very happy with their decision and their move. So in a way, it's a happy ending to a story. They both seem to think mm. their mental health is very good yeah, at the yeah, moment. Yeah, it's a happy ending. Who thinks that this may have been a dreadful mistake at this point. Oh, well. To do this interview, just for them personally, because I think it can seem say like a, a good idea. Say yes or no. Just say yes or no, because I think yes, it can seem mistake. like a good no, idea that you want people to know what the truth is. But sometimes these things can feel ghastly the next day when you actually see the impact. Mm, let's just have a look. put yes, no. This isn't so about what was whether the question we, again? Well, the question is, um, now that they are happy, they seem very stable <coughs> was mentally, it a do you think that this could be a big mistake and actually set them back from how much progress they've made in their personal life? Okay, well, we're seeing equally, it's coming down equally. Terry Jane Butler, no, not at all, think it helps them. Let's just, okay. scroll, I'm going to scroll fast. Uh, yes, no. Oh, I'd say... What? 50-50, isn't it? It is. I'd say just slightly more to the nose. <coughs> Um, yes, mistake. I, I, I think it's I'd, I'd say it's 50 50. Well, that's really interesting, isn't it? 50 50. 50 50. <clears throat> Sorry. So, okay, so here's the question which Oprah didn't ask. And I suggested this to Oprah on Friday Did on Loose Women. I said, Oprah, the question you need to ask that Did I would you, what, ask far is away, what, was it? what do they hope to get from the interview? <clears throat> yeah, what do the, what's next? What do they hope to get? Yeah, net what to, to what, why next. why have you Sorry, done but... why have you why have you done this? Is this to yeah. because you want to crack yeah. open the whole conversation about um you know racism in this country? Is it set because you want to set the record straight on all the lies that you were feel were told about you? And and who is it important? Who is it important to you that these pe that people know this? Revenge and sympathy, someone said there. Peace of mind. It's a great question. Why didn't she ask it? I, I gave it to her on Friday. You asked the questions that Oprah's too scared to ask. That should be your strap line under <laughs> your face. 
Nadia, ask the questions because over a Because I tell you why. Because their philosophy seems <clears throat> to be, like we, we heard many Josh times... Josh says, fuck all. We heard many times through that interview that Meghan doesn't read any of the stuff and doesn't know any of the stuff that had I find that said hard about to her. Because otherwise it would have impacted her very negatively. Okay. The, reason, the reason I find that hard to believe is I think she probably did read some of it and that's why it impacted on her negatively. Mm. But... Whatever the reason, they're probably at a place now where they're not reading it. Yeah. So, I would think that their philosophy... says she asked him. I think <laughs> the philosophy would be more, we are not going to get swallowed up by the opinions of people that we don't care about. You know, those that mind don't matter, those yeah. that don't matter, them. So, whose opinions are you trying to fix? Yeah. Chad Bailey says Oprah asked them that and they answered. Did they? <laughs> What did maybe, they say? Did she see Loose Women on Friday? <laughs> well, okay, maybe it wasn't a clear enough answer. What was their answer, Chad, if you so certainly know that she asked it? Because I can't remember what their answer was. I, I genuinely think that it would have been better to have... Na if you're going to say, tell the story about um, Archie's skin colour, I think it would have been better to tell the story properly and to have named the person. Yeah. Because what I think it's a waste of a chance to really confront that racism. And I think uh, it's just been diluted into, who was it, who was it, who was it, who was it? Is it true, is it not true? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that that's a shame. I think it's a missed opportunity. Terry W says that question was on the CBS clip. I think it's bloody clip. CBS yeah. clip. What's the Excuse point of doing me? that? It's to drive traffic, <laughs> isn't it? CBS, the app. Um, Hannah Hawkins, interesting point. I think it sounds like they wanted a role similar to Beatrice and Eugenie. But it just hadn't yes. been allowed. Yeah. And and she said that Eugenie was her friend, didn't mm. she, beforehand? Mm. So Yeah. So there we go. But Eugenie Oh yeah, because they're the same, aren't they? Because they're the grandchildren. Yeah. Because I don't think the great grandchildren, as the law stands, are automatically made princes and princesses. Mm. It's the grandchildren. Mm. Um. Millie Clark, I think it was good for them to address the issues and inform us of the situation, but may potentially cause more issues bringing it all up. Mm. <clears throat> Having said that, if they didn't, history would or could repeat itself. They wanted to change the public opinion of them, and they did, yeah. says Xander Gibb. Yeah, OK, so has, it, has this changed your opinion on the royal family? I thought it was going to be... Can I be honest? I went into this thinking it was going to be a car crash of a, a terrible, terrible sort of, you know, just a terrible moment of awfulness, of, of sycophancy and, and sick-inducing God knows what. You didn't think we were going to get reality? No. And Real I, questions. No, and I, and I think... And, I was, and that was me coming from the perspective of being really sick and tired of the way in which Megan's just been villainised and, and marginalised. And, and there's this fake pretense from so many people that it's not because she's... You know, you know, of a mixed ethnic ethnic background, and but it's not really, always. No, some it's people, not always. Some people it's don't not... like her and aren't racist. No, 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 it's no, really no, I know. no. I know. I'm talking about it's the not... low level colonialist coverage. Yeah. That, that, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And I think that you know, and but you can't. The reason I, I still stick with this thought. I know you say you can't say everyone's that, but you will never be. We will now never be able to define that defining no. moment between colonially sort of infused coverage. And the general kind of, if you like, brainwashing of a nation. You, you, that's the point of the press. That's what the press does so successfully. We don't know the extent to which we've been massaged into a place on her. And so I came into this expecting it to be very American, very, you know, the chicken coop for me was a manifestation of that. But I thought it was he really... He really didn't like the chicken coop. I thought it was really refreshing when they were both sat there together. Um, I thought it was shocking and uh, shocking and eye-opening from a mental health perspective to hear how isolated and alone she felt. Mm. And I think you have to hear that and you have to not question it. You have to think about it. You have to consider it and you have to think, my God, you know, what would you have done in the same place? Mm. But it wasn't, it wasn't the... Mark um, and Nadia, what do you think of Harry being stripped of his military achievements? I think that, I think that was cruel. I mean, he's either achieved them or he's not. I think he'll I mean, know. I don't know the details of what is those... It, is it stripped of achievements? Was it achievements or is it just... Isn't it stripped of his regimental... 
Yeah. Um, sort of. I mean, if he'd won a medal for it's his name, in being it? in action, then of course, if, you know. Yeah, no, you would work, never lose you, that. You couldn't lose that. No, is no, it? No. Is it? Were these ones that are just given to him because? I think he was a his... representative, or I think he, I think he was the name on the tin, if you like, of certain regiments and right. certain. You know, I think, I think he'll. I think I thought the way he was was regimental position. I think he was very. I, I could really, really yeah, see the pain, hurt, but the pain in him when he said we'd not. moved to Canada, the mail gave out our address mm. and, the, and the palace took away our security and you could see, oh my God, I really did feel like that's my dad mm. or that's my nan or that's my, didn't care enough about me to protect me. Like he said, has the position changed? Mm. Has the safety level changed? And when she said, you know, I'd seen the death threats, I'd seen this, I'd seen... Mm. That must have been incredibly, incredibly hard, I think, to be yeah. fair. Well, I mean, and also none of us will ever know what kind of horror they've received from, from members of the public, both in America and, and mm. in the UK. Mm. Um, you know, it's just, it's just awful. So there you go. That was intense, mm. wasn't it? Mm. It was an intense two hours of television... Always refreshing to watch it with your own eyes rather than read about people's interpretations of it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. There's so much more it's to be It's the nuances, gleaned. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and yeah. the shared looks yeah. and the... But I'm pleased they're happy. I hope this draws a line in line under I'm it. pleased that they're happy, but I'm but worried well. about the pink cloud because eventually everyone wants to see their family yeah. again. And I just yeah. worry that this will be... He... He yeah. needed to do it. He needed to break away from them completely because he wants to break free and he wants yeah. a different life. And I think that's all brilliant. I just think the interview mm. was a step too far for him. Mm. I think that he... I think he should have let Megan do all of it on her own because do I you? think it was more meaning. Mm. It meant... It right. seemed to mean more to her to do it. I just think... Yeah. Yeah, sort it out. Yeah, I do. I do worry. Passive aggressive. Not all Megan haters are racist, but every racist hates Megan. Exactly. 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 Very true. Um, okay, guys, keep sharing your thoughts. Keep sharing your thoughts. I'm sure this story is going to rumble. Obviously, there's going to be the uh, interview with Megan's father tomorrow morning. Uh, out they come, all the other members of the family. It'll be interesting to see what the royal family's response well, is. Well, I mean, I think we're going to see again when we see yeah. Meghan's family speaking, we're going to have to ask that question again. Well, How much did this impact on you? Not, not, not dismissing the fact that the institution certainly had yeah. an effect on her mental health and the way she was living within the palace. I mean, I found it extraordinary that she wasn't allowed out for four months. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's like almost like being a hostage. Well, Why wasn't she allowed out? I think I know exactly what we're going to do in bed tonight. We're not going to listen to John Campbell. We're going to go to CBS, the app, on your on YouTube, and we're going to watch the other questions they decided not to put in the bloody main interview. I, I, I didn't understand why she wasn't allowed out. Yeah. Kirsty Bookbinder, Burkbinder, I fear for the bubble bursting. I, I'm not, yeah, yeah I, had, I had certain thoughts about that, which I'm not going to share, but I, 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 my bigger overarching worry is there will be a moment when... Yeah, I worry separate to, separate to Megan, separate to the whole thing with Megan. You know, I think their relationship would be fine. But I, I worry there may be a moment where Harry sort of lands with a jolt and goes, whoa, hang on a minute. Uh, you know, is this what I want? Somebody's saying here, Harry said they mentioned the colour of the baby before they were married. Megan said it was when she was pregnant. Maybe it had been both. Mm, maybe. Um, yeah, we are going to watch Megan's Queen dad tomorrow, emergency. and we, I think we'll do we'll do um, we'll do a we'll do coffee morning. Coffee morning. Queen after. is in emergency talks with William and Charles, according to Daily Mail. Jump on the mail. It's going to news is going to be breaking everywhere, so let's check it all out, guys. We're going to love you and leave you. We're signing off. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe hit if the you subscribe. haven't. Uh, guys, also when you hit the subscribe button, hit the little notification bell because then YouTube can notify you whenever we're uploading. We upload every day, we do lives every day, movie reviews, TV reviews, mental health films, gardening, Lots. cooking, and our family reality show. So a whole lot of stuff goes on here and we have a brilliant community. Yeah. We know so many of you yeah. by name. That's why we always like it when new people come to give us a shout out and give us a wave so we can we can spot you. It's been, joy um, it's been really enjoyable sharing that with yeah. you guys. Thank you. Wow, we've been on for 45 yeah, minutes. bloody hell. Thanks, wow. Guys. Okay, Whew. brilliant. All right, my lovelies. Lots of love. See Sleep you tomorrow. Tight. See you in the morning. Bye.